Next up, the Car Buyer Advisor, your first place to turn for everything automotive. Taking a stand for consumer education and dedicated to connecting you with the industry's finest automotive products, services, and advice. And now, please welcome the Car Buyer Advisor. In today's world, most of us have a car, and many families even more than one. One thing they all require is service or repairs. Because of the number of the cars on the road, an enormous number of service and repair shops exist. The problem is they are not all created equally. They do not all use the same quality parts, for an example. Too many, in order to offer lower prices, actually use inferior products to attract customers with a low price. Because of the recent economy, more of you have fallen victim to this trade practice. Others cut corners in their labor costs by employing less qualified technicians. These are the people that you rely on to properly diagnose your car and to properly repair it. And don't worry, it's only your safety. Now, car dealers and repair shops are the two areas of the automotive industry that we advocate you, the consumer, reform. And we want you to understand this. To to create this reform is simple. Stop supporting poor business practices. They don't get your money. They cease to exist. What we provide you with is a resource for knowing then who is worthy of your support. Our next guest is an example of what you want in a mechanical service or repair shop. By listening to our next guest, you will know what is truly important when selecting a shop to work on your car. You will hear what a business that is committed to their consumer and the community stands for. More importantly, you will know why they have not only been invited as a guest, we have requested their regular appearance on our show. We want you to get to know them as well as we do. If you do, you will take your car to them and you will trust them enough to recommend them to your friends and families. Please welcome Shari and Jeff Pheasant with A Master Mechanic to the show. Thank you for being here with us today. Good morning, Mitch. Happy New Year. Thank you. Same to you. Now, I doubt most of our listeners will ever fully comprehend how much pleasure it brings us to introduce businesses like yours to our community. Uh, And thank you so much for accepting our invitation. But before we get started, I have to ask this question. I, I mentioned some of the shortcuts that so many automotive repair shops take to advertise the lowest price. Does it frustrate you as a reputable shop that they continue to exist or the stigma that they give the industry as a whole? Yes, that uh, really bothers us because uh, it's getting to be kind of bad out there as far as that goes. And people are not using the quality of the parts and doing the right thing. It affects it in the long term. You might do a quick fix, but you're not you're not going to get the value out of your money because you're going to end up revisiting that same issue. Well, and you mentioned uh, to me just one of the shortcuts that they'll take is even the quality of an oil. And, and that, that can, uh, would you share with our, our listeners what uh, you were referring to when it came to uh, using the wrong oil, what consequences it can have? Well, uh, these cars these days are really uh, taking very specific oil for them. You have variable valve timing control, and sometimes they'll put the wrong grade oil in there or the wrong viscosity, and it does not uh, do the car any justice. It ends up causing a lot of problems down the road. I think a lot of your economy oil places change that changes oil. You know, they're looking at their labor costs and they hire, you know, for very inexpensive to keep the costs down. So, you know, you, you affect the knowledge. When you affect the knowledge of the tech that's working on the car, it affects what happens with that car and how it's how it's taken care of. Well, and I see that as quite often they don't notice something that if had it been addressed then because with a skilled technician under the car, they may have seen another problem that could have been fixed very economically that then develops into a bigger problem. Well, we're in our car every day, but how many times do you look under the hood? How many times do you turn the radio off and listen to what's happening? Yeah, I uh, haven't been underneath my car in... uh, uh, I, I won't go there. <laughs> um, now, I, I was on your website and I read a story about a young man. Jeff, uh, that young man was you. Uh, and I loved it. If you wouldn't mind, please indulge me by sharing it with our listeners. Well, uh, back in the early 70s, I think, was when I really got into the automotive. I've been into it all my life. But uh, I guess it all started with a tractor that uh, a neighbor had given me that was sitting out in the field for several years and hadn't run. And I took that tractor home and started to work on it and got it running and actually went on to trade that for my first car when I got older. And it just kind of escalated from there. I've always had a passion to repair equipment and automobiles. 
Oh, so you now get an idea of where it all started, and that was uh, quite a while ago, so I think we established you've been at it for a long time. Oh. Um, and especially for the people that don't know you yet, um, there's more than just experience that makes you worthy of the support. Um, the way you conduct your, yourselves, your core fundamental values, your commitment, uh, you put them into writing on your website, and what's even more important is, uh, and more impressive, is that you actually deliver on them. Uh, please also share what your commitment is to your consumers. Well, we want people to get to know us. We've been in this community for a long time, and we know a lot of people, and we enjoy serving them. So when they go to our website, we want them to get the same feel that they get when they come to our shop. And and that is we want to educate them. When you're educated, knowledge is power. And so many times when you don't understand what's going on with your car, that's when it costs you money because you get into repair mode where you're fixing it instead of maintaining it. And um, I know when I first got married to Jeff, and we just celebrated over 20 years that we've been together. Congratulations. Yeah, it's awesome. I love it. Can't wait for the next 20. But I remember cars would break down and he'd hear what was going on and he'd tell me what was wrong with it. And, you know, we had just been together. This is our first five years and, you know, a mechanic, you know, that I had that stigma attached to me as well. And he taught me right, because I'll tell you what, I would say nine and a half times out of 10, he knew exactly what was going on just by listening to it. So I've always kind of considered him the master. Oh, yeah. That's uh, um, another thing is, you know, we're chatting the other day about how much effort goes into a quality business. And you just mentioned it started in this case with the name, a master mechanic. How did you get that? Well, I, we decided that we needed to go into business. I talked to Jeff and I knew he had the qualities for up front. And I have to share that I have none of those. Um, I don't work on cars. I did change oil about three months ago just to show our techs that I could do it. So <laughs> I, <laughs> Is there a video to prove that? Yeah, um, no, none. <laughs> it was on my own car. Um, so I just wanted them to know that I can put a shirt on and get dirty. It's all good. But I hold up the back end and a space master, um, you know, places high high, but I think mostly is that when you're a master, you know enough that you teach. We looked in the dictionary and you're qualified enough that you teach others the same. And I remember when Jeff taught our son and I think he built his first engine with our, our son at, when our son was nine years old. Um, and he's going to be 20 now. And so he's been in the industry for 11 years already and is wow. fabulous. So to me, he has the master skills and we constantly do training with all of our techs like that as well. Uh, so that transfers in everything that you do. And, and and Jeff, I was talking to you the other day about that too. It's not just that you train them, but you really check every car through the process because of your skill level. It, it's, you mentioned it's your name, it's your reputation when it leaves. Um, so to share a little bit about that if you would. Well, I uh, like to make sure that uh, there is some quality control. You know, nobody's perfect, but I like to make sure that uh, when you bring your car into our shop, that uh, the problem that you brought it in for is addressed and we get the big picture and make sure that everything was looked at and make sure our customer can leave there knowing that their car is safe, reliable, and they are not going to have to come back to our shop in three days or a week. No, I really want them to know the differences in shops. And I mentioned in my intro, the parts they use can be of a different grade. What can consumers expect when they come to you? When they come to our shop, they can expect to get the correct part for that vehicle. There are several out there that are discount uh, parts that are not the correct part. Uh, they make fuel pumps these days that don't have the modules and the electronics in them that they require for today's vehicles. They run a little jumper wire across so your fuel gauge works and the pump works, but they're noisy. They make a lot of noise. They don't function like the original equipment should. So when we put parts in the car, we like to make sure that we're putting the correct part for that car and that it's going to last for a long time to come. Well, and you mentioned when they use these jumper wires uh, to uh, bypass some of the electronics in the car, what they're really doing is they're bypassing the computers, the electronics, the things that were designed to make the car run right and, and to get good fuel economy and the emissions controls. And it, it really scares me that, that I didn't realize that. I thought you really educated me on that one. And, uh, you know, I've been at it for a while. So I really wanted our listeners to kind of hear that kind of technical knowledge that you bring to the, to the table every day. Now, proper diagnosis uh, relies so heavily on the skill level of the technician, but it also comes from listening to and understanding the consumer's uh, concerns. Uh, this is an area you really shine. How does all this translate to the consumer getting the job uh, done right the first time? 
Well, we spent thousands and thousands of dollars a year on training and making sure that all of our technicians have the latest and greatest in uh, technology training and to understand all the new things that are taking place in the industry and that we can really uh, make sure that they are getting uh, the training to repair that car correctly the first time. We like to listen to our customer also when they come in. It starts with the customer, understand their needs, and make sure that everything is addressed uh, to its fullest. Mitch, we're a team. Um, when they come to a master mechanic, all of us there have different skills that we put together um, that work as a team for their vehicle. Uh, and I, I think that that's important to realize that they get all of that. So we do listen first and they're, they're a part of the team. They're driving that car every day. They know how it acts. They know what it does. And so when we listen to what they have to say, that helps us know um, how, what, how they want their car to run. And we look at long term. We want to know them 10 years, 15 years from now. We have um, parents that bring their kids in, uh, people from Las Vegas that have kids up at UNR. And we service a lot of the kids up there because they want somebody they can trust and that they can call and they know are taking care of, the, of their, ch their children's car. Well, I found something really interesting and, and I hope you don't mind if I share it but it seems like every time I come in there somebody's bringing some kind of food or something into your place it's <laughs> okay. really it's it's interesting because I've, it's, I've never seen it in the quantity and consistency that happens at your place we like to eat we share food with others um, that came from Jeff and I knowing that um, uh, research-based technics uh, mechanics tech do not eat right and so most of us if you don't eat right by afternoon your brain's not working you're a little stressed out and just think if that person's on your car so jeff said to me one time he said honey i want to buy lunch for all of our employees every day and you know of course i dropped to the floor like thinking of the cost of that but then he convinced me and we've been doing it for th three years now yeah at least yeah and 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 we have manners you know we like being host and hostess and and have people and friends and so if you stop by the shop at lunchtime we always have about enough extra servings for three or four people and some of the parts guys they come on Friday on purpose at lunch. I've seen a few of them, haven't you? Yes. Well, I've seen your clients bringing in foods and, and joining you for that. And I think Absolutely. that's really rich. It, it just seems so authentically comfortable and, and friendly when you walk in. It's it's, it's just an experience. Yeah. I, I, did, I had to get to that because it's, a, it's something you just don't see everywhere. Well, and as cliche as it sounds, mom baked an apple pie for Friday. We celebrated Warren's birthday and we had apple pie, mom's apple pie <laughs> at a master mechanic. Well, and you mentioned that your employees, they, they perform at a higher capacity because they're fed and they're they're comfortable and and I, I got to paint this picture for our community because again the show the whole basis for what we're standing for is that they support quality businesses and it's so much more than just that they have a even just the right part for an example it is who they are and what they stand for and and it goes from community involvement to their employees and how they care for them that if you can't care for your employees how do I, I ever expect you to care for me as a consumer we well, would be nothing without them and i know lewis and mike at the front desk um, are driven by standards and they enjoy pleasing others very much. Um, our techs, Rob and Jerry and Mike, Michael, uh, work very hard to get it right. Um, if they don't have it right, they don't give up until it's right because they haven't accomplished their goal and that is about getting it right. So it's not just about going and get a paycheck, it's about accomplishing goals for other people and that is to keep their car running economically so they have money to spend elsewhere and that happens by keeping you out of repair. Well, and what we found is when a shop uses quality parts uh, and has highly skilled technicians, historically, they also usually stand behind their work. And uh, what, what, what is your take on that one? Yes, I agree. If you do the right uh, thing the first time, use the good quality parts, uh, you know that uh, your chances of getting that back because of a warranty problem, it's very, very slim. Now, um, let's face it, the, the car industry is it, basically because the economy has changed. It's caused a lot of consumers to keep their present car a little longer. Um, uh, and uh, Shara, you were uh, mentioning that you advocate maintenance instead of repair, instead of chasing repairs. So explain what you meant by that. Well, I, you know, I didn't come from the car industry. I've been in business for about 25 years, um, but I've been in the car industry for seven and I've got to learn from the master um, and everybody around us. And I know what I know is um, as the consumer, and I try to keep that perspective in my brain because I'm the gal that walks in the front door. And um, it, when you maintain a car, it's like maintaining your body. You keep it at a certain level of performance. You give it vitamins, you give it the right food, you keep going and everything's good. If you allow yourself to bottom out, you know, you're not drinking your water, 
you're not doing your vitamins. A few months down the road, you could be at the doctor's office. Same with your car, and it's going to cost you more now. So it, you need to maintain your vehicle rather than let it go and ignore it, which most of us don't have money in our budgets for a car. We have it for rent, for utilities, for food, but your car doesn't always bump up there on that priority list. And I think that we want to educate people to bump it up there. Go and get your oil changes. Let them look at your car. A good shop is going to tell you, look, this is important now. You can put this off for a little bit longer. Why don't you budget for this about three months down the road? And so that's what it's about. It's not about seeing everything we can repair right now. We want to charge you as much as we can. And we have customers that come in and tell us horror stories uh, about that happening to them. And that's not what a shop is supposed to do for you. It's about you. It's well, about your needs. You mentioned routine maintenance and the weather's, uh, it's going to come, I think. Uh, but, uh, you know, with the winter approaching, uh, maybe uh, uh, soon, hopefully. Maybe. <laughs> for our ski resorts, so. we, we hope so. Um, but you have some recommendations around that. What are they? Well, I would say the most important thing is to pop your hood open once a week or once every two weeks and check your fluid levels and make sure that they're all up to par. What fluids? Uh, keep an eye on the uh, driveway. <laughs> if you see something leaking or dripping down there, uh, don't ignore it. Make sure that you address that. Uh, if it sounds like the car's laboring when it starts, one morning you may come out and it may not start for you. But uh, I guess the most important thing is, is a lot of people are guilty of this, is pop the hood open every now and then, take a look and make sure all those fluids are up to par. I'm so glad you said that because in the old days you go to get gas, they'd fill up your car and they would check those for you. And and I don't know if you Good ask point. most consumers when that stopped and we got to self-service gas stations, they stopped checking their cars. And and just by not letting that oil run down too low could save you an engine. Absolutely. And you can see the oil in your engine. And that's easy for me, lady consumer, to look under there and see, oh my gosh, there's some oil all over. Maybe I should stop by. And I want to encourage consumers, customers community, friends, family, don't be afraid. Don't hesitate. Go on in. It, 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 you can always walk away, but go on in and let somebody, let the shop that you trust. And of course, we'd like that to be us, but we realize we're not the only ones in town. There's several other quality shops there too, but let them look at your car and trust them. Let them take care of you. Well, I, I just got to tell you where what you just said was uh, so rich. It, it, this you're you're really committed to to the people that come to you, and you what you just said was uh, uh, remarkable. I've never heard anybody um, share the fact that you know there are other good quality businesses. It's really why we're here. The problem is the vast majority of them are not, and and if you haven't got one that if you if the, your current shop you don't walk away feeling like that's what they are then you definitely want to pick up the phone and call a master mechanic and, and let them uh, get to know them. Because if you're not getting that, you deserve it as a consumer. Now, on our preferred business page, we suggest consumers support businesses that are committed to their community and to providing their customers the highest quality products and services fairly priced. Now, if you're paying close attention, we placed committed to the community first. If they care about the community they live in, they're far more likely to care about you. Um, you are avid supporters of our community, and I know you don't do this to look good either, but please share your passion for our community and some of the things that you do for our community with our listeners. Well, when Jeff and I talked about the foundation of our business, um, you know, where are you without your employees and your customers? It's like a vehicle. It has four wheels, and you balance that vehicle. And it's a, For us personally, it's about family, um, friends, self and community. And so community is a whole wheel as important as our family or self. And we're going to be here forever. My husband's been here forever. Um, I'm a transplant since the early 80s. So I, I think I'm now a forever girl, a native. Does that make you a native? Early Maybe. 90s for me. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I feel like I'm, I'm tied to this community. It means everything to me. I've never loved a community as much as this one. I feel like I lived everywhere else to come here. <laughs> me too. Okay. So, and, and then I found Jeff and now I'm anchored here. So um, I, I, it's about that. We do a lot with the, the Arena Rodeo. Um, we just collected jeans for foster kids in the Denim Drive. Uh, Jeff, a uh, gal came to him with a church bus and they go down to Mexico and build houses and, and they had trouble paying for that bus. So he's taking care of that bus for about three years. Um, we occasionally have seniors that come in um, that need some help. Um, we participate in a lot of the kids event. We're really dedicated to the kids. And um, it, rather than your formal, normal form of advertising, I'd rather put my money into an event and a community and the people. 
Well, I, and you do, and uh, I'm, I appreciate you sharing that with people. I mean, you're, you're a philanthropist, and, and you don't do that to, to impress other people. You do it because it comes from your heart, and I've, I've witnessed that, so I wanted them to hear a little bit about that. Uh, Shari, we, we talked about this. All businesses, and, and you mentioned this earlier too, Jeff, regardless of how hard they try, will ultimately have a failure. I loved your take on this topic, and, and please share what you said to me about that. Well, uh <clears throat> People just uh, have the tendency to neglect their car, and I think that um, if they uh, have a uh, big picture and keep up on their car, it just saves them so much money in the in the long run. Um, we well, learn we learn more from our mistakes, I think, and. Uh, uh, I don't think there's another shop in town. I don't think there's one shop in town that would say that they never they always get it right um we always try that's what our aim is you can be the best the fastest or the cheapest um and it depends on what quality you're looking for um we've chosen to be the best and so that's what we want to provide is quality parts um and the best service around and i i think that too often in life mitch really we don't admit our mistakes because we're afraid we're going to be condemned for them and i think that it's 10% of what happens to you and 90% of how you handle it. Just like you said, a diagnosis is 90% of it. So for us, it's 90% of what you handle. If something happens, can you go back in and is your mechanic shop there for you? Will they stand by that alternator that was a faulty part that they, you couldn't tell when you put it on and, and do they bump you up because you've already been there and now you're taking extra time that will happen. If that happens with us as you are a priority. So I think it's how you stand behind it. And I know Jeff is adamant when something doesn't go right, like occasionally happens, he is on that in a heartbeat. Well, and, and you just said it. Uh, we've we've tried to share this on uh, multiple uh, levels with our community, that it is in that light of a failure, which all businesses will experience, and, and we as a as a show have already uh, experienced as well, And, and but is in that light of that failure, um, how a business responds that really defines the business. And, and if it, they act with velocity and what you just said about bumping them up in the rotation, it's not like you have to wait to get back in uh, line. It's like you prioritize them. Uh, it, it's a failure. We want to take care of you and you get to it right away. It's, if you act with velocity and integrity and the 90% of it is how you respond to that, you're absolutely right. But <laughs> None of us are perfect in and our you lives. you know, too, Mitch, if somebody uh, had a problem with their car and a part failed and we had installed it and it was a little out of the warranty, we always take care of it. Um, I want to make sure that uh, that they feel good about that. Jeff, I also heard that you go to the SEMA show every year and uh, to keep up on the latest and greatest. I do. Uh, I get a lot out of that. That really means a lot to me because I get to find out what all the latest and greatest is. Uh, Jeff and Shari Pheasant, uh, a master mechanic. You can find them on our website, thecarbuyeradvisor.com. And your phone number? 358-6777. Thank you again for coming in today. And we'll uh, see you all next week on The Car Buyer Advisor every Saturday.